my YouTube channel. Today's topic on the video is going to talk about the shoulder girdle and a little bit about the biomechanics of the shoulder. What inspired me to do this video is almost every single yoga teacher that I've been in class with will often say lift your arm above your head but draw the shoulder blade down. And as someone who's done a degree in physiotherapy, I was like, but hang on, that doesn't sound right because of certain things, which I'll get into in a second. And so I went away again and as I always do, I did a lot of research for myself. I didn't just take what I'd heard in my degree, but I actually went away and I read lots of different peer-reviewed papers. I went and spoke to different therapists. And what I came out with was actually a body of information that supported something called scapular humeral rhythm. Now, what that dictates is that after 30 degrees, when your humerus, the long arm bone, starts to abduct, i.e. move away from your body, that's when the shoulder blade starts to shift to give the rotation of the arm space to move. Now, if you're drawing the shoulder blade down the whole time, you're not actually giving your scapula the chance to, because imagine you've got this ball where the socket or the socket that the ball slots into. Now, if you're constantly drawing the shoulder blade down, your humerus, the long arm bone, doesn't have the space to rotate. So it can't actually lift up all the way. And what that causes is a lot of shearing force in the cavity called the glenoid fossa. And the glenoid fossa is a very shallow joint and it's actually very delicate. It's not one that you should tamper with really because this is a very mobile joint. The shoulder is probably one of the most mobile joints in your body. And because it's a very shallow surface that it's living in, there's a lot of connective tissue that's holding this long arm bone in place. Now, if you start messing with a scapular humeral rhythm, you put a lot of strain on those very delicate structures. So for example, if you're practicing a handstand and you're drawing your shoulder blade down, the long arm bone and this head of the humerus starts to drop down into a very shallow space. And that shallow space will actually cause something called a labral tear. The labrum is like a little lip that helps to keep the arm bone in the socket. And if that tears, dudes, it's a very serious injury because really you can only rehab that by getting even stronger in the muscles, which you're not using if you're not activating push, or you have to get surgery to get the labral re- stitched back up together. So it's not a great injury to have. I kind of also wanted to understand where this information had come from when I was talking to the different yoga teachers. And what I found was yoga teachers were really concerned about the fact that people are like this all the time. And I'm sure you've seen it. I don't know if you work in an office where there's lots of people working in desks, but people are very hunched in their shoulders. They seem to be very tense in the trapezius, which is a muscle which is really affected through stress. And so the thinking that the yoga teachers had, which I completely respect is that they wanted to see that people were relaxing that part of their nervous system. The only problem is, guys, that if you live up here all the time, it's as bad as living down here all the time because the shoulder's not designed to either just be depressed or just be elevated. It has the ability to do both. It has this ability to lift up when the arm is up and draw down when the arm is moving down. If you're always moving the arm down, you're pulling the shoulder blade rather. If you're always moving it down, you're activating your pull muscles. So this is so useful. If you're gonna do a chin up, you're gonna lift your chest towards a bar. Yes, you need the shoulder blades to move down to get that action, but the converse is true. If your arms are lifting up, you need your push muscles to send the arms up and to really elevate that shoulder girdle. And this instead of letting that long arm bone just live in that very delicate connective tissue, actually creates a bed of muscles for the shoulder blade to live in. Your arm actually doesn't connect to the body in any other place other than this very delicate little clavicle bone, your collarbone, to the body. The rest, it's muscles. It's just living in muscle. So if you're lifting your arms up, but you're drawing the shoulder blades down, you don't have the right muscle activation to support the scapula, this big whip shoulder blade behind you, and this arm bone, the humerus. If you activate your push muscles, however, the muscles that live around the shoulder blade that keep your arms safe, they start to lift and gather around the arm and they make it so much safer so that those delicate little connective tissues that aren't designed to support a lot of weight, they don't have to take the strain. Now, that's talking about arms above your head when you're here and also when you're in a handstand, but what you can also apply that to is in a plank position. So often again, I'm in yoga class and the yoga teachers start saying things like, make sure that your shoulder blades are drawing back and you have a flat line from your heels all the way to the head. Again, you're not activating your push muscles in a push exercise. You're drawing your shoulder blades back, which is a pull action in your body. And again, you're not giving your shoulder girdle the support that it needs. So what should you do? Already I sort of covered arms above the head 
overhead, you're elevating. And it's the same thing. When you're in a plank position, you actually want to draw the shoulder blades around the front of the body. And as you push into the hands, you'll find there'll be like a little curve in your upper back. That little curve is called a kyphosis. And that kyphosis shows that the right push muscles are being activated to support your shoulder girdle. And then the last and the most amazing benefit that happens when you do get your push muscles activated is you start targeting your deep core muscles. And these are often neglected if you're always activating pull in a push activity. You'll find there'll be like a little bit of sagging around the middle body. However, if you're pushing, you're closing the gap between your ribs and your pubic bone, which fires on erectus abdominis, which is this long muscle down the front of your body. Now, I'm not going to blab on too much longer. I hope that this video is just giving you a little taster as to why it's so important to actually get the shoulder blades to move with the arm direction. But please go away and do your own research. Don't take what I say ever as gospel. Go and talk to other people that you respect in the wellness field. Go and do research as to scapular humor rhythm. What is that? How does it work? Look up YouTube videos, read articles, and then let me know what you find because I also want to expand my knowledge. And if you're watching this video and you're thinking, hallelujah, thank goodness someone's talking about scapular humor rhythm and you're actually learning something and you're thinking, wow, I didn't know this, but it makes a lot of sense. Please give me a big thumbs up for this video. And then finally, as always, if you want to practice full length classes with me, click on the link that's appearing now or check out in the description box. I've got a little link there where you can access full length classes with me. I love doing my videos for you. Thank you so much for always being here with me, sending you loads of love and lots of happiness. Mwah. Thank you.